Uh, my presentation is English, so please use headset channel three. So bad. His Excellency, Mr. Gwen Swang Fuk, member of the Politburo, Prime Minister of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. His Excellency, Mr. Chin Din Jun, member of the Party Central Committee, Deputy Prime Minister. His Excellency, Mr. Chan Tuanain, member of Party Central Committee, Minister of Industry and Trade. And dear leaders of ministries, government, Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning. My name is Toru Kinoshita, Chairman of BAMA and President of Toyota Motor Vietnam. On behalf of members of BAMA, I want to express my sincerest gratitude to leaders of the government and ministries for your continuous support towards the automobile industry. Today, I would like to report on the current situation of Vietnam automobile industry and our ideas for future growth. Let us begin by reviewing the current status of Vietnam automobile industry. Automobile industry consists of major three elements, including market, vehicle, and supporting industry, which means parts manufacturing. Ideal situation is the growth cycle in which stable market growth leads to stable CKD production growth. And this supports to stable support industry growth and enhancing CKD production. Finally, both CKD and supporting industry drive market growth by contributing to economic development. Looking at these three elements, they are quite small in Vietnam still, compared with other ASEAN countries. And now, let us look at the vehicle manufacturing. Vehicles are composed of various parts, as shown here. Vehicles made in Thailand or Indonesia are mostly composed of locally sourced parts, and only around 10% of parts are imported. On the other hand, for Vietnam CKD, more than 80% of parts are currently imported. Next. I will explain the reason for high import parts ratio in Vietnam. Compared to countries such as Thailand or Indonesia, Vietnam's supporting industry has strengths and weaknesses. Strengths are high quality and low cost labor force, and logistic cost saving compared with import because parts can be manufactured closer to vehicle. And the weaknesses are lower market volume, absence of material industries such as steel or plastic, lower level production technology, and poor know-how among suppliers on production and business management. Parts with bigger strengths than weaknesses can be localized in Vietnam. For example, bulky parts, such as seat sets, could be localized due to high logistic cost saving is there. Also, labor-intensive parts, such as wiring harness, often require delicate assembly by hand, and Vietnam's competitive labor force could be leveraged. With low logistic cost, wiring harness is competitive enough even to be exported to other countries. Here are the images of parts I just mentioned. And upper level, second to fourth layer, are parts with bigger weaknesses and are not localized yet. As you go higher to parts, such as engine and transmission, the required investment becomes even larger and production process becomes more complex and wider variety of raw materials are needed. Because of them, impact of Vietnamese weaknesses, such as lower market volume, become bigger for parts in higher layers. Here are samples of mid-sized resin parts in second layer. They may look very simple, but using resin to mold 
these parts require injection machine resulting in significant investment. Taking the example of this fuel inlet, quoted by Vietnamese local supplier, is close to four US dollar, more than double the price of made in Thailand parts imported into Vietnam. In general, this two to 300% cost gap exists for other mid-sized resin or steel parts as well in this level two. And the gap is even larger for higher layer parts in layer three and layer four. As you can see, currently it does not make economic sense for businesses to localize these layer two, three, four parts. And coming back to the vehicle, although situation differs by company or by model, Vietnamese CKD is around 10 to 20% more expensive against CBU imported from ASEAN countries. First reason for this gap is high depreciation and overhead cost due to lower volume. Second reason for this gap is high parts logistic cost. Logistic cost of importing parts is higher compared to CBU, mainly due to the required packaging. And CBU import logistic cost is around 5% of total BQCIF CIF cost, while for parts, this percentage could increase to 20 to 30%. And as mentioned, more than 80% of Vietnamese CKD is composed of import parts and contributing to higher logistic costs. Furthermore, we cannot switch to local parts as they are far more expensive, as I explained with the fuel inlet example. Now, let me share how the industry side has been tackling these issues. As mentioned, there is two to 300% cost gap for in the second layer parts, but this gap is even bigger for parts in third and fourth layer. So our next step is localization of second layer parts. For the cost gap, we initially thought that the volume, small volume was the key reason but upon our investigation, we found it wasn't. Besides low volume causing high depreciation cost, we saw that supplier's process cost was much higher due to weak know-how, and material cost was also higher as they had to be imported due to lack of material industry in Vietnam. So out of these three items, industry side, can reduce process cost by improving suppliers' know-how, and we have already started these activities. Factory line efficiency improvement activities, shown here, is just one example of such activities done by us. However, even after this industry effort, still around 40 to 50% cost gap is remaining because two other items cannot be tackled by the industry side. Now I want to clarify the necessary support from government. Looking ahead, there are many positive trends for Vietnam, such as market volume is increasing rapidly, steel and plastic industry are beginning to grow, FDI investment from China plus one trend could strengthen production technology, and industry efforts are improving poor supplier know-how. However, it would take many years for these weaknesses to fully change to Vietnamese strength. For parts localization, industry will continue our efforts, but these two remaining cost gap cannot be resolved by ourselves. This requires volume increase and material industry growth, which could take more than 10 years to happen naturally. But instead of waiting, such weaknesses can be reduced by policy support so that localization can happen earlier, soon. More specifically, necessary support are incentive 
for dyes and jigs investment to reduce depreciation cost gap from low volume disadvantage and import duty exemption to reduce import cost gap for material. At the same time, support is also needed for the Biku side. As mentioned, localization can be accelerated for mid-sized steel parts and resin parts with policy support. However, still more than 60% are import parts. And from Biku viewpoint, it would take longer time for cost gap to become 0%. So during this period, CKD cannot survive against CBU without support. So without, with no support, OEM will be forced to switch CKD to CBU at the timing of Biku model change. Happens every few years. To avoid this, we expect timely decision to secure fair competition for CKD against CBU. If timely decisions are not made, supporting industry also will face risk of survival with less and less demand from OEM to purchase made in Vietnam parts. I would like to summarize the necessary support. Key to automobile supporting industry growth is realizing growth cycle of market, vehicle, and supporting industry. To achieve this, support is needed in three areas. First, maintaining stable market growth. Second, policy to ensure CKD survival by covering 10 to 20% cost gap against CBU. Third, policy to accelerate localization of mid-sized steel and resin parts. Finally, I would like to share our key message for today. Our goal is to contribute to automobile industry development. In the past, supporting industry growth was limited, mainly due to weakness of Vietnam's industry. Now, with industry efforts and positive trends, such as market growth, supporting industry can build foundation and take off. But no, to realize this, concrete and practical policy support is urgently needed. We, as BAMA, will strive towards the development of Vietnam, its people, and the automobile industry. Thank you very much for your attention.